Hello friends and welcome back to A Christian Woman's Journey. If you are new here, my name is Margaret. I am so glad that you've joined us. This is going to be a garden planning weekend for us. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around. Today we're actually supposed to be outside. I don't know if you can see behind me there. It is pouring right now for the moment. We're going to do some indoor things that we had planned to do for Frugal February. And then hopefully we're going to get outside real soon. We're going to be trimming our bushes and our trees so that we get a nice fruit crop come this summer. And we got a few more things we got to do out there. I think we're going to remove some garlic mulch. Some of the garlic is actually starting to come in. So we have so much planned. Let's get going. So glad you're here. I've got some cilantro seeds here. Coriander seed, also known as coriander seed. And I've got some dirt. So one of the things that I said I was going to do for Frugal February is to get some spices growing in my windowsill. So let's get planting. I'd love to have some beautiful cilantro growing indoors. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to start laying these guys out on a grid. Typically we have very good success with these. If you feel like your plants are not dense enough, it's one of those things where you can just very, very easily... Uh, go back and replant. Cilantro is typically very easy to grow and a very successful crop. All right, we've got our little grid and I'm just gonna push these guys under the soil. Going down maybe just a couple of millimeters. Like I say, this is not a hugely sensitive process. Go an extra millimeter or a millimeter short, you're, you're still okay, don't worry. And then we're gonna get it nicely covered. It's as easy as that, and I'm going to hit this now with my spray bottle. Let's get this with the spray bottle. I'm going to really saturate this very thoroughly. You want to make sure that your seeds get wet. And what I'll do is I'll come back every couple of days. If the soil is dry, I'm going to give it a little more water. And I think we'll see growth before long. Let's get this into the windowsill. Should get plenty of sun there. Hey, good morning. It is a sunny Sunday morning, and today I'm gonna to be starting sweet potato slips. So I'm headed right out to the store to find some really nice sweet potatoes. I don't know if you can see that behind me. I'm at Whole Foods. And they are usually kind of expensive. I don't usually shop here, but usually the sweet potatoes are really nice, a nice selection, the right shape. So let's head on in. Hopefully I can find what we need. So right away, I'm passing by so many things that I really hope to grow this summer. We've got quite the variety here, and we've got a lot of different shapes. And what we're looking for, we're looking for something quite like this, because we're actually going to suspend these in glasses. So this is a perfect, narrow, tapered shape. This one is really a beautiful shape as well. And notice there are no blemishes, no broken parts. These will spend a good bit of time under the water growing the slips, and I don't want them rotting. We'll put this one on the side. We're going to take this one. These are absolutely gorgeous purple soaks. This guy's a little bit too big to fit in my glasses. Maybe this one here. Little blemish there. Maybe we can work around that. So many gorgeous sweet potatoes. Aiming for some variety here. These look great. Okay, we got our final lineup here. Okay, so those were a little over $5. I hope it was a good investment. Uh, we are hoping for tons of sweet potatoes this summer. I'm gonna walk into somebody or a door. You wanna start out by getting these guys good and washed. They were pretty dirty. So all the action is going to happen here in my bay window. Let's get our potatoes down. I'm gonna show you how to get these into the right orientation. So it turns out we only have four tall glasses. We're just gonna have to pick the four that are the prettiest. So just a little tip here. Um, in my recipe boxes, I actually keep also a stack of garden tips. So I pulled this one up this morning. It's called Starting Sweet Potato Slips. And it's just a quick reference for me to remind me how I do this process each year. Okay, so if you look online, everybody has a little bit of a different way of preparing their sweet potato slips. I'm just going to show you what works for me. The first thing I try to do is get this guy oriented. Now the part that I'm holding here at the top, this is the blunter end 
and this is where your slips will tend to come from this end. The pointier end on the bottom is where you'll get your roots. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna suspend this out. You're gonna see me put some toothpicks and I'll suspend this in water. I like when my slips emerge under the water. And the whole process before planting takes about six to eight weeks. Okay, I've got these guys in the orientation that I want them. Let's get some toothpicks in and let's get them in the water. A little blemish here. I want to make sure I keep this out of the water. And we're going to do the same with each one. We've got our initial setup here. Everything is suspended and in a sunny window we're going to get some water in these. So I generally get these filled just about to the top. Okay, this is our setup. We're gonna change that water every two to three days. You don't want it getting slimy. And we will see as time goes by, you will see from the sides here that little tiny slips will emerge and we'll cover it all on video. So we haven't grown sweet potatoes for a couple of years. I am really excited and I am really hopeful about the ones that we just started today. We are also gearing up for the coming hummingbird migration. This is an absolutely great website. It's called hummingbirdcentral.com. And there is so much information here about hummingbirds. There are maps so you can track them as they make their annual migration. Uh, they give all kinds of tips on feeding them. Really everything you need to know to attract hummingbirds to your yard and to feed them. So let me just show you what we did last year. We found a recipe to make our own nectar. And I kept just a little chart of how often the nectar has to be changed. It's really important to keep clean, a cleaning schedule here. Um, and I just, we kept this on the side of the fridge, just how often we changed it. We love hummingbirds and we're really hoping this year we get a chance to see some. Occasionally I would go outside and I would notice a bunch of nectar missing. So I know we must have gotten some and they have very good memories. They love coming back year after year. So I want to be ready for them this year. Down in the basement here, this is where we stashed away our feeder. My sister was kind enough to buy this for our family. She loves hummingbirds. She gets so many by her house. So we're going to get this guy cleaned and we're going to get ready for April. Okay, so we're on the road now, a little bit more garden planning going on. Um, so we have some broken beds out back and we want to add some new beds. We're just trying to scout around, get some ideas, what would be durable, whoops, a lot of bumps there, uh, what would be durable, uh, what would be cost effective for us. So we're headed to a local store to check all that out. So I guess we're kind of early in the season here. They have not put out too much. Lots of topsoil and mulch and bricks. Certainly might use these to, to either try to repair our broken beds or maybe even to make new ones. This is all we're really seeing yet with regard to garden beds. We're leaning away from wood. So picking up a couple things that we need. But they don't have a lot of garden beds out, so the wheels are still kind of turning a little bit with what we're going to do with the garden beds. So this is also the time of year where our fruit trees and bushes are dormant. And just before spring is when you really want to trim them back and prune them. And again, just to keep the process a little bit easier, I write up all these cards for myself. This is just a little photocopy here of how and when to do the trimming. So this right here is our honey crisp apple tree. And I'm just looking to see, does anything need to be pruned away? Prune in late winter, you can do up to a third of the tree. And I'll tell you, I'm not seeing much to prune here. You would want to prune any branches that are touching the ground. I see some kind of heading in that direction, but there's no real problem yet. Um, any dead, dying, diseased branches, nope. 
haven't had an issue with that. And then really, if you have any branches that are really clustering in tight, where the plant is not aerated anymore, um, you would think about trimming those. Any branches that are acute, like this, this here is a little bit of an acute angle with the main part of the tree. Generally, you want the branches more like this. This is more at a right angle. It keeps your branches just coming out and it aerates the tree much, much better. So just looking at this a little bit more closely, this is an acute branch with the main part of the tree. This is a very young tree. We've actually cut it at one point, so we don't need to do this one now. We're looking at this one here. This is kind of acute. Um, so I think we should probably trim this. And if you look out this way, it is tending downward. So you want to leave at least three nodes and you want to cut at a 45 degree angle and we'll get rid of this guy. This will be the one that we'll trim. This is one of our blackberry bushes. This is not our main one. This is, this is a part that has spread. And again, you want to trim, uh, prune it when it's dormant in winter and you want to get rid of the dead canes. You want to leave really the strongest five to seven canes per plant. Right, so this one here that we just clipped, that is definitely dead. Let me just show this to you. Um, it's brown, it's old wood, it's not green or maroon, that would indicate life. And usually they're kind of flimsy and spindly. You can see it's all dried up inside. This is not alive. Whereas, you know, compare that to other branches, say, that are green, these are alive. These will give us fresh fruit. This is actually our main blackberry bush over in my office area. And again, you can see branches like this one, just you, you can feel it. It's just very, very weak, very spindly compared to this one that's vital and alive. And look at that collection down there all those branches coming out. We really got to trim that back. This is more of the whole plant. You can see how long these branches have gotten. You really don't want to leave them that long. This is the time to get them down to about 42 inches. Any side branches can come down to about 15 inches. Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to do here, we're going to get some of these canes that are dead. This bush has been so good to us. It gave us beyond an amount of fruit that we ever could have dreamed of. And it really does need to be trimmed. Great to get rid of some of those branches. Okay. So some of the branches here that we're keeping now, we're doing just what I said before. We're trimming them back and making them a lot shorter. They can be shorter than four feet long. They're going to do a lot of growing this summer. This little gadget works like a gem. What you see my husband using here, it's a power stroke pruner. Continuing to get some of these side branches here that are just way too long. We found a long dead branch here. We're going to get that out. Wow, we are really trimming a lot of dead branches off this. We just cut off one of our biggest branches, and I just want to show you here as we get back just how woody that is. That really was dead. Again, we're only keeping the strongest five to seven canes. So we've got this almost completely trimmed. I don't even recognize my blackberry bush anymore. What am I going to hide behind in my office to do my videos this summer? Completely transformed here, but ready for new growth. This is our beloved blueberry bush. And again, we want to trim right about this time of year. Prune it when it's dormant, late winter, early spring. And the first thing that we're looking for that we would remove would be any diseased or broken wood. And how do you identify that? It's any branches that are gray, dry, and brittle. So something like this here, I think, I don't know how well you can see it, but it really fits the bill. Gray, dry, brittle. Let me show you another, a living branch for contrast. This branch in here is younger and it's newer. It just, it even feels more vibrant. It's cool to the touch. And notice it's got this green or maroon kind of color to it. This is going to give us fruit this summer. This is a living branch. Let's get rid of that gray, dry, spindly branch. So it's time to trim some of the side branches. Now you can see we've got a lot of branches coming this way. This is one of our walkways. So this has become really inconvenient. Some of them are pointing downward. We're going to want to trim these back. There are also, there's such a density of branches here. You notice a lot of them are crossing. We have to get rid of some of those to improve airflow. So you can see we've cleared our path here. These are still a little bit dense. I think we can take away a few more. 
Okay, I don't know if we trimmed enough, but we're gonna leave it at that. We don't wanna overdo it. This is our raspberry bush, and boy, is it dense. Raspberries are kind of a different story. If you've ever grown them, you know this. They give offshoots under the ground. We've got them coming up in random places all over. We're gonna get those out. So just a little warning about the thorns on the raspberry bushes. My husband just tried to get up one of those stray branches. Um, he had gloves on, but still he felt he got stuck, okay? So you need really thick gloves to do this. Here, we're gonna start clipping some of these guys here. Some of these that are dead, spindly, so close to the ground. Yeah, we gotta really trowel these out, get them out as best as we can by the roots. Guys, I apologize for my angle. I know we're getting a lot of shadows, but it's just where the sun is right now. We're gonna get this guy out too at the root. Just getting some dead branches here that are really obvious. They're always really kind of spindly. All the fruit ends up on the ground. Yeah, so we're gonna get those out. So we've given this a haircut, we've trimmed it. Really, you only wanna keep about four or five canes per square foot. We've got more than that. Ideally, you would keep track of what fruited last year because it usually will not keep fruiting. Uh, we might trim a little more than this. Let me just get a different view. Yeah, we're gonna do a little more trim and a lot of these are just at a terrible angle. And again, sometimes when you just feel some of these branches, they feel dead. And really the more you trim back sometimes, the more you give a chance for new growth. So this is looking a lot better. I just wanna show you what we're leaving. We're leaving some of these canes that are, that are obviously alive. They feel alive, they feel vibrant. They're greener, they're more maroon and we're hoping to get some fruit from these guys this summer. So we are a lot newer to growing raspberries. Our crops have never been that successful. We've done a lot better with the blueberries and the blackberries. So if you are a raspberry grower and you have any advice for us, we would love to hear from you. That bush there produces absolutely delicious, the most delicious raspberries I've ever had in my life. It just doesn't make that many. So we would love any advice that you might have. We are making a lot of headway today. Um, still, we have so many things on our list, but the next thing up is kind of fun. Um, you may have seen our video where we did our garlic planting. We're gonna tackle that next. Some of it is actually starting to emerge. So exciting. I was so excited to notice this, despite the cold weather. This right here, that's Vietnam purple garlic. And our Montana giant is really, really showing itself. It's really coming through. So it's been kind of cold. So I was really surprised to see that growth. But then again, I guess we are getting close to the spring. So maybe I should have expected it. Um, we have a lot of family members growing this same garlic. We're all in different zones. It's gonna be fun to see when the garlic emerges for everyone and what kind of yields people get. Um, so one of the things we want to do today, remember if you remember back to the video when we covered these with mulch right after planting, we covered them with about six inches of leaves and lawn clippings. One problem that we've had in the past is that I think we probably use too much. Got a motorcycle going by. I think we use too much. And what we noticed is kind of later on in the season when we started removing some of that mulch, um, some of the plants were kind of suffocated beneath and never made it. So this year we vowed, we said, let's get rid of some of that mulch earlier and hopefully more plants can come up and penetrate through it. So the goal right now with these three beds that have garlic, let's get rid of about half the mulch and we'll save it and hang on to it for other beds. This is really wet, really heavy. We're gonna get that off. And let the plants underneath really start to breathe. And you know what? I see some coming in. We're going to keep them covered. We don't want to take too, too much off. If we get a cold spell, we don't want them to die. So I think I'm taking off, I want to say I'm taking off probably like two inches. While still keeping them protected. So pretty much all of our beds look like this. Got some of that heavier mulch off the top. And this was the only area, this is the Ukrainian garlic. We didn't see anything at all unless we really dug. So we got a little bit more off here. We don't wanna squelch any of these amazing plants. This is a really awesome sign of spring. 
I can see our hyacinths want to come in. So I made myself this little garden calendar to help remind me when everything needs to be done. You can see we did our pruning. We're a little bit late this year, but I've got to start my indoor planting. Uh, the last frost of the year is not that far away. This is just a good way to keep me on top of things that I need to be reminded of. When the gardening catalogs start coming in, it is really such a wonderful time to just sit and go through, pour over all the new items that they have, and especially all the wonderful new heirloom seeds. They are my favorite. I'm always eager to try new things, uh, try new fruits and vegetables, and get the chance to add those heirloom seeds to my library. This year we're adding a few new beds and we're hoping to try some new varieties of tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, sunflowers, maybe a few more. One of the things I find hugely helpful to have each year, and I think I've shown this to you before, is a garden map. So this is right now what our backyard looks like. We've got some vacant beds. We've got three that already have garlic demarcated an area here where we put bags for our sweet potatoes and I think we will be adding I will draw in two more beds here because I think we're going to need two more and then I compare that to what it is we typically plant what we know we already have seeds for in the library and what it is we'd really like to buy. So once you know how many plants of each you'd like to grow, you will know exactly what will fit into your garden bed and where you need to expand it. Or you may have to shrink back what it is you were planning to grow. It is so easy to get so tempted when these catalogs come in. I don't think I can resist these purple galaxy tomatoes. Let's get a look inside. This catalog is filled with heirloom seeds and they're all seeds that are more on the rare side. I got really excited seeing these pages here with the wild bergamot and the lemon bee balm because we want to start a little bit of a pollinator garden. I found the look of these carrots and the description of them just so charming, so irresistible. I'm tempted to get the Kyoto red and really tempted to get the Uzbek golden. I've never grown anything like them. I was absolutely wowed by all these varieties of eggplant from all over the world. These are Iraqi. This is a Puerto Rican variety. They're beautiful. And I was really enchanted by these that are from Spain. Very tempted, we'll probably get one or more varieties. Both leeks and lemongrass would be completely new to me. I've never seen so many beautiful and rare varieties of melons. If you know me, you know I love growing all kinds of varieties of peppers. They're so pretty, just God's vibrant, incredible colors, so many different flavors. I was really pretty enchanted by these guys here and I just might get them. Our family is in love with sunflowers. We love all the varieties and this huge one really caught my eye. I cannot resist these beautiful purple galaxy tomatoes. This catalog has endless variety after variety, so many of them so pretty uh, that I've never heard of, so rare. Look at these beautiful cherry tomatoes. We are so tempted to try several different varieties. We know that we have to protect against so many garden critters. We really don't want to spring for all this money, but we also don't want to lose all our beets again or all our corn those are some of our favorites, so we're going to have to really get creative with erecting some barricades. I've got one lemon that's almost ready to be picked, and I've got two lemon trees total, and it's also the time of year to prune them. Now, these are fairly young trees, so I'm not sure that I need to really prune anything. I really got to look them over carefully. Okay, so all I really did was I got rid of a few branches that look like sucker branches down at the bottom. I think we'll leave the rest. I have been saving up coffee grinds, banana peels, and eggshells. 
and we are going to use these. It's a great fertilizer for citrus. We're going to start getting these all blended up and we'll put them at the base of all the citrus plants. Blended that up a little bit. We're going to get even more in here. Let's get these to our citrus plants. Really just trying to get this all around the base of the lemon trees. And I also have two lime trees. This ought to be good for the lemon tree. My key lime plants have really struggled through the winter and I'm so hoping that it helps. So I just added some water on top of that fertilizer. I really hope it helps. I would like more than just one lemon next year. So when I make up a list of my heart's desire for the garden, you can see it's quite a bit. And actually I will need 11 more beds to completely do all of this. But we only really plan to have eight and a half beds available. So maybe in the future we can grow all those things, but obviously I'll have to cut my wish list back a little bit, maybe put some things in pots. We'll see how it all works out. So anyway, those are all our garden plans for today. We have plenty more. This is when it all really starts happening. Uh, next week, I think we'll be starting to plant some seeds. It'll be from here on in, just purely action-packed in the garden all summer and fall long. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. If you're enjoying these videos, please click like and subscribe. It really helps us. Until next time, to God be the glory. Good night, friends. We'll see you again really soon.